Hey everyone, Timmy here, back with another video. So this video here is in reference to a blog post I did over at my blog, timmyit.com. So if you're actually, if you're watching this video from YouTube, you can just follow the link in the description below uh, to just go head over to the blog post. Uh, but the video here, I'm just gonna walk through shortly how you could install the Intune PowerShell SDK and pretty much just get started with it and what you have to think about. So just let's just get right into it. <clears throat> what we need to do is, first of all, we need to install the Intune PowerShell SDK. And we have a few ways of doing that. So if we just head over to Google and we just Google Intune PowerShell SDK. The first result we get here is a link to the GitHub page. So what we could do is we could head over to GitHub, we can download the SDK and we could install it. Uh, Microsoft uh, has really good documentation here on how you could do that, um, how you download it how, and how, how you can install it actually. Um, so I recommend that you read through this. But the way I do it usually is I head over to the PowerShell gallery. That's also in the Microsoft documentation, by the way. Um, but if we Google Intune PowerShell SDK, we see down here, we have a link to, uh, to the PowerShell gallery. If we click on this one here, it, oh, it actually brings us to the, um, uh, an older version of the SDK, but that's fine. So as we can see down here, six days ago, a new version was released, which is called 6.1907.1.0. Uh, so that's the one we want to use here. Uh, but if we wanted to use the old one, we can just copy the command line here. This is just a PowerShell command line that we're going to run. Uh, and this just points to the 1902 version of it. But we want the uh, 1907 version. Uh, so let's see, can we do this? If we remove the version from the URL, I think this will, yeah, it does. It takes us to the latest version. So as you can see here, the command line is a little bit different because we don't have the specific version in it. So what this will do is just take the latest version available. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna copy this one here. And then we're gonna open up PowerShell. I usually use IEC, I, I find that easier. And I'm gonna run it as an administrator. <clears throat> And from here, I can just copy in that command line and just run the script. So what's gonna happen now is PowerShell is gonna go out to the PowerShell gallery and download and install the module. Uh, I already installed the module on this machine here. So that's why it went so fast. Usually it takes about like 30 seconds or so to a minute, depending on, on various things, of course. And what you also would see is usually you get a pop-up telling you that it needs to install some providers, like a NuGet provider or something like that. And you, then you just have to click yes, download and install it. But once that's done, you have the install the module. Uh, what we can do is let's do get command uh, dash module and just do Microsoft graph Intune and pipe that to out grid view. This will take all the commandlets available in the module and just show it us in an out grid view. Um, the, the, the way I, well, the reason why I do this is usually if I want to search for a different commandlet, maybe I'm looking for something or just easily want to browse through it, I use an out grid view. So in this view here, we have all the commandlets available for us that's in this module and there's a lot of them. Um, I counted it earlier and it was 1,569. So there's a lot of commandlets here. That's pretty impressive actually. Um, so in the usual PowerShell naming scheme, uh, we have get. So if there's any inf information we wanna retrieve and get, we use the get dash and then whatever it is we wanna get. So uh, take this command, for example, this is get dash Intune detected app. We'll retrieve the information 
that's in well in relationship to detect the apps. We could do uh, get Intune device configuration policy, will which would get us all the Intune device configuration policies in our tenant. And except for get, we have invoke. If there's in any action we want to invoke, it could be, for example, if we want to sync devices or whatever action that you could do from the Intune portal manually. If you go there manually and you click sync or whatever it is, we can invoke it with commands as well. We have new if we want to create something new. So we, if we want to create a new Intune, uh, Intune app protection policy, we could use this commandlet here, for example. And then of course, we need to feed it uh, parameters as well with all the information that's needed to create the policy. Uh, so we have new and we have remove, of course, if there's some, something we want to delete from the Intune tenant, we can do that with these commandlets here. We have update. Is there any information we want to update within a policy or whatever it could be? We have the option to do that as well. So I won't go through all of this in details. I will probably cover more of the important uh, commandlets in other videos. But let's say you're looking for something, but you don't know exactly what it is. But you know it has something to do with configuration policy, for example. Uh, so I'm from here for filter, we can use configuration. So if I just search for configuration, I will then filter on all the commands that has something to do with a configuration. I can just search for whatever I want it to be. Um, so that's just a little bit about commandlets, but let's get started here. The first thing we need to do after installing the module is to connect to our tenant. Uh, because we need to retrieve our authentication token. So the way we would do that is use the connect MS graph commandlet. From here, you could do admin consent. This means that you will, on behalf of all the other users in your tenant, you will approve this application in Azure. But if we just do it like this, we get, so we, we, we need to now authenticate to our tenant. So I'm just gonna authenticate to my test tenant. And it's gonna ask me for permissions because the Microsoft Intune PowerShell, which is an application that are running in Azure as well, will need to be able to read and get data for me. So if I would do this, like this, um, I'm gonna pretty much, well, you will see here with all the permission it's needed. And those permissions are uh, in general, just connected to me as, a, as the user connecting to Intune with my credentials. So depending on what kind of permissions I have, uh, if I'm an uh, administrator, for example, I will get those permissions. But what I could do is I could do consent on the behalf of your organization which means it will automatically consent to all the users in Azure. So if they want to use this app, we have already predefined that they will have access to it. Because if you're not an administrator, you cannot approve for everyone. So I'm just gonna do this, present, but okay, one thing before I do that, I'm just gonna show you in the Azure portal if I head over, uh, yeah, sign in. So in Azure, we have something called enterprise applications. If I click on enterprise applications, you will see here are the enterprise application running in Azure that has either permissions to do something or whatever it could be. And as soon as I accept here, a new application will show up under enterprise applications. So I'm just gonna click accept. And in PowerShell, what we will see is we just get this information back that the UPM we used and the tenant ID we connected to. Uh, let's see if I go back and uh, like that. So let's see if we can find 
find the application here now. Uh, let's see, that's the custom engine PowerShell. That's not the one. It should be something called the one for you. I don't see it here yet. Maybe I need to. I just want to jump into each unit actually. I should. Mm. Oh, yeah, there it is. So here we now have the Microsoft Intune PowerShell. So this is the applications that now has permissions in our Intune tenant. I'm not going to cover exactly what this does in detail. i would probably do that in a separate video. But now, when we have accepted everything, what we can do is now we can use the, the command lines. So let's see, get in tune, let's see, device compliance policy, for example. So if I run this now, I will be able to get all the compliance policies that we have in my tenant and all the information that's in regards to those compliance. But remember that it's, we, with permissions here, uh, RBAC always take precedence. So if you don't have um, permissions to read data in Intune, it doesn't matter if you have already consented to it, because if you don't have access to Intune through RBAC, you won't be able to retrieve the information anyway. So, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. This is just uh, was just supposed to be a really short video on how you could get, get started installing the module, connecting to your tenant, and just starting play around. So if you have any questions, you post them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So thank you.